All right, I'm about to install the roller lifters on this 4.3 liter Marine V6. And uh, so I'm gonna, there's the uh, six roller lifters there for the, uh, this will be the pasture side. But um, this is the, uh, I guess you call it the saddles. This is what the roller lifters set in, the trunnions sit in. And so I took all the, the lifters out of this, uh, this piece here, set them up there and they're in the right order. I didn't want to mix them up. They're in from, going from right to left. Um, so I took this, took them out of here and I cleaned this part and I'm about to place it. There's an arrow on it that says up. So it goes up like this. And this sits in here just like so. So you can get it to sit right there. So it sits right there. And that's what the uh, roller rocker sit in before you tighten it down. Each one of them is tightened down individually with its own bolt. So that allows you to put tension on each one individually at a time so that you don't, uh, so you don't strain this by putting tightening one. If you had to tighten them all down at one time, you might strain this piece here because uh, one of the valves might be open or one of the cam loads might be up causing their stress to be on that particular rocker. So uh, it's pretty neat. I like this design, it's pretty neat. And it's, uh, Gives the V6 roller rocker just like the V8. So I'm about to clean, uh, by the way, in case uh, you didn't know what a roller rocker was, um, those new engine buildings. See the needle bearings in there? That is considered a roller bearing. And so these rocker arms rock back and forth on roller bearings. It's a very frictionless and very, very low friction uh, joint. And uh, it's what accounts for about five horsepower on this engine. This engine's rated for 205 horsepower because it has these roller rockers. Um, VH get about seven horsepower more, but anyway, and that's at the top, obviously at the top RPM. So um, I'm about to clean up each one of them in, in, uh, individually and then install them one at a time. Um, I'm going to use uh, blue lock tight on this uh, bolt here, so I'll put it in so it doesn't back out. But um, that's it for now, and I'll uh, do another video when I get this side done. Okay, this is a, a video on uh, how to install the roller rockers on a 4.3 liter V6 for marine application. Um, actually, it's any application, but this has to be a marine engine. Um, I just put on the roller rockers, uh, attached them one at a time. There's a bolt that holds each one of them down in the center. And uh, uh, I've found that to install them, um, if you try to tighten the bolt down when there's tension on the spring, in other words, the cam load is pushing up and the, the push rod is pushing up, so it's putting tension on the lifter. It's kind of hard to get these things to go on in the right location centered. So um, what I did was I found the ones that were, the load was not pushing them. In other words, it had no tension because as soon as I loosen, you tighten it down. But as soon as you loosen it, you can feel it loosen up. So that means there's no, no spring tension on it. So I found the ones that had no spring tension on them. Uh, put a lock tight on them, tighten them down. These bolts are tightened down to 22 foot pounds. Um, it's 264 inch pounds on my inch pound torque wrench. But um, 22 foot pounds for these bolts, and I, I tighten them down on the, the ones that had no pressure from the cam. And then once you do, say, three of them, if you rotate the engine another uh, uh, 360 degrees, since the cam only rotates once every other revolution, uh, once the cam rotates once for every two revolution engine, if you rotate the engine one turn, you'll put the cam on the opposite side. So. Um, and you might have to move it around a little bit, but anyway, I rotated the engine around so I could uh, tighten up the other three. So now all these are tightened down to 22 foot-pounds. Um, so anyway, you put them on, you oil under here, you oil under there. I oil the, uh, the roller bearings on either side, and then I put blue Loctite on these uh, bolts. I don't think it was necessary. I think these bolts are friction bolts, but I'm not sure. But the blue Loctite, blue Loctite won't hurt. So that's one side, uh, but I'm going to do the other side now. I'm not going to video that because it's identical to this side. Um, if, I any, if I run across any problems, I'll, uh, bring a, I'll do a video of those, but so far this went pretty smooth. Um, what I did do is uh, I did this one first, and uh, then I did this one on the end. That helps get this bar located in the right location because I found that if I, when I try to tighten this down first, in other words, I did that one first, but I didn't tighten it all the way down, just kind of finger tight. Then I did this one finger tight and that held that bar in the right location so that I could do the rest of them. Then once I got the rest of them all in there, then I went back and did the three that were loose and then rotated and did the other three. So um, the point is I didn't tighten down any one of them first because I wanted this bar to be sort of loose and 
in the right location once all six of them are in place. So that's one of the general rules about uh, building anything as a mechanic. Um, if you have more than one bolt holding something in, you want to put it in finger tight and not tighten it up until all of them, all the bolts are started and installed. Because otherwise, you might be uh, you might ruin a gasket because you might have to loosen that bolt back up in order to get the other bolts lined in there or started. So that's one of the tricks of the long-term tricks of being a mechanic. So, all right. So this uh, this valve train is on this side anyways uh, done. The only other thing left to do we put the valve cover on here, and there's three bolts that hold down right there, right there, and right in there. So those are called center bolt valve covers. And there's a gasket, a blue rubber gasket that goes on the valve cover. This rest right here, it doesn't need sealant. Um, so, and it's reusable actually. So um, I think I've got brand new valve covers, brand new valve covers for this engine. So. I'll put those on after I get both sides done. But right now, this uh, this valve train on this side is done. So, all right, the entire valve train is now installed, and this is what is considered a long block. If you order a long block, you get the uh, block, the rotating assembly inside, the cylinder heads, and the valve train on top of it. I'm not sure if you get valve covers with it or not. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Typically, a long block also includes the harmonic balancer on the front of the crankshaft, and the motor will be sealed up. But um, so anyway, this would be a long block if you ordered one. Um, I've got the valve cover uh, clean. This ready to go on the uh, passenger side. I haven't cleaned the valve cover for the driver's side. Um, it's now ready uh, for the uh, intake manifold, and this is a this is the stage at which you would have to decide whether you're going to go carburetor or fuel injected. If you went fuel injected, you'd put a fuel injection manifold on top up here, and if you went carburetor, you'd put a carburetor manifold. In this particular case, this customer has a carburetor, so that's what I'm going to put on here. Um, I put the original uh, bolt back in and the um, and two washers and a, and a spacer so I could turn this thing over by hand. I, I squirted some drops of oil in all six cylinders and turned it over by hand just to make sure everything's lubricated real good. So at this time, um, the valve covers are on and um, I'm going to fix it, go clean the intake manifold and put it on. So it's, it's coming right along.